hello and welcome Dixie Belle paint fans. How are you today? It is Melissa from the Top Drawer RVA coming to you live where we hang out every Wednesday around this time at 3 p.m. to sit on the floor and play with paint. So welcome. How's everybody doing? Um, if you don't know me, I am the owner and artist at the Top Drawer RVA. I'm also a Dixie Belle brand ambassador and I like to teach wild and wonderful things. So I have a kind of fun project today and I thought we could hang out and do some prep work and then do some hand painting. I'm going to be Bob Ross. I don't have a mustache and curly hair, but we're going to try and recreate some Bob Ross-ish <laughs> moments today. So welcome. All right. Well, let's jump in, shall we? Sneaky prep is uh, kind of your fast and handy way of getting a piece prepared for paint that might not be perfect. So let's talk about that for a minute. So like I said, this little cutie was pulled from the trash. Somebody was going to throw it in the garbage and they gave it to me instead. It was not in good condition. Besides the fact it was super dirty, I had to use my white lightning to clean it very, very well. Um, it had a side pocket of the veneer on the edge was actually lifting off and below this veneer is particle board. So the whole piece was coming off. What I had to do was come in and actually re-nail it in and then I was left with some broken particle board and some holes. So I'm going to show you how I cover that up, work smarter, not harder, and uh, make a fabulous masterpiece happen out of garbage, shall we? Let's jump in. So this is actually a maple little end table, right? So we talked about how the edge on the opposite corner was completely broken and scarred and damaged, okay? All down here was like a big hole. I filled it with mud. You can also see the mud on the front of this piece, filling in the holes that were from the original hardware. And now we're gonna talk about sneaky prep. So my trick for sneaky prep is where the mud was on the opposite side, I've already fixed it because that's the end we're gonna paint on today. Where the mud was, was left all like a scratchy hole. We could sand back and, and get it smooth and you could paint a really smooth finish on this piece. But guess what? You're going to struggle. You're going to struggle a little bit because painting a smooth finish on a piece that's already lumpy and bumpy and crusty and has issues, it's going to be difficult. So let's be smart about this and let's junk it up some. Since I'm going to be painting today a hand painted mural on one side of the piece, we're going to be doing trees, we're going to be doing fog, we're going to be doing clouds. It's going to be super cute. Um, we are going to junk it up some. So these edges, where the edges on the other side was not perfect. And in order to make it look presentable, and actually I did it to the front as well, we're gonna talk about it in a minute. I use something called sea spray. Have you tried sea spray before? So this is a texture additive. When a piece is lumpy and bumpy and chunky, and I have a hand painted piece that's going to be going over top of it, right? We're gonna be hand painting on here. I want texture. I love texture. Junk it up even more. Let's make it bumpy and crunchy in all the corners so that when you're painting, your painting has depth. It has um, some dimension. I like to have texture. So in order to add texture to your piece, you could use something called sea spray. Sea spray comes in this little bag with a little scooper. The directions on the back say two scoops to eight ounces of paint. We're going to get even smarter here. I kept a jar of paint that was almost empty. So it was already pretty chunky on the bottom. It was almost empty. So all that good stuff on the bottom is what we're gonna use mixed in with the sea spray to create a textured effect on this piece. And when that's dry, you paint right over top of it and you get a gorgeous, stipply textured effect that's gonna cover all of the damages on this piece. It's as easy as that, y'all. Don't discount the ability to add texture where there's damage and hide it because you can do it. It's sneaky, sneaky prep. All right. So I already mixed this yesterday into this little can of burlap. You can see inside of there, it's lumpy and bumpy and chunky. I mixed the sea spray with the old chunky paint and I'm going to use a chip brush for this job today. Okay. The reason I'm using chip brush is sea spray, this textured additive is chunky and thick. I really don't want to be washing that down my drain. So when I'm finished with this today, I'm going to put it in the garbage and be done with it. But I am going to keep this lumpy, crunchy paint because you never know when you might need it. I mean, personally, I need that stuff all the time. So I'm going to take my sea spray additive, add it to my paint, and I'm going to apply it to the piece. Let's pretend that this is the corner that had the massive damages where there is lumpy and bumpy and crunchy bits that you want to cover. I went heavy on the edge. The color of the paint that you choose to do your sea spray additive does not matter. 
because I'm not sanding it back, it doesn't matter. Because I'm just building texture so that when I actually do my hand painting over top of this product, it's just gonna add some gorgeous depth and dimension to my piece. If you wanted to really chunk it up, you could use a spatula to like spackle it on. But when this dries, it's quite hard and it's gonna cover the fact that this piece is not perfect. Do you know what I mean? I want you to like think in different ways, okay? Furniture, it can be art, right? Why does it have to be clean and even and perfectly smooth surface? It doesn't. You have the ability to create your own art. Make stuff happen to work for you. So the ability of adding the sea spray on my piece, once this is dry, it's just gonna give me a nice textured base from when I want to paint over top of it, okay? Because this drawer over here was split where I repaired it with the mud. I'm gonna come up all the edges. I'm gonna chunk up all these edges down here so that when I actually come in and paint over top of it, it's gonna be a textured piece. It's gonna look like I wanted it that way. I mean, hello, making my job super easy by adding this little lumpy and chunky texture over top of the damages, and then you're good to go. You can paint, paint as you wish, because nobody's gonna see all that repair work that you did. Nobody's gonna see that it's not a perfect piece. What do you do? Chunk it up, let's make it gorgeous, all right? So that is what I did on this side. So over here, it's actually already been dry since yesterday. I did this part to prepare my work for today for you on the Dixie Bell paint page. This chunky additive has textured my edges. You no longer can see where that big hole was, where I had to like nail the whole piece back together, where I had to cover it with Dixie Bell mud. You can't see that part. Now it looks like it's supposed to be there. Like I did this on purpose, right? Because I did. I did do it on purpose. All right, so I'm gonna talk about one more thing on here before we move to the other side. <clears throat> the inspiration for this piece, besides the lumpy and bumpy, and chunky delicious texture is these ugly knobs. <laughs> so I went in my shed yesterday. I have a shed full of furniture that I keep on hand to um, be ready for my lives, to create content for you, to work with Dixie Bell and make beautiful, wonderful things. So when I took this piece and I looked at it, the original hardware that was on was actually rusted and crusted. I could almost not get it off. I was worried. But after I did get it off, I thought, well, what am I gonna do to this little end table? What are we gonna paint on here? I thought, well, I better look for hardware first in my giant stash of recycled hardware. And I found the ugliest knobs I've ever seen in my life. I don't even know where, <laughs> don't even know where they came from. These are antlers, y'all. They're antlers. Look at those creepy things. So I have three, which is exactly what I need for new hardware for this piece. Um, because majority of my pieces are like recycled items, I try and find the best way to keep costs down, and I do donate a lot of my items to different charities in the local Richmond, Virginia area. Um, a Sister's Love is one that supports single mothers getting back out on their own. So if I can keep my costs lower, then it lets me do more work for them. It lets me do more work, more good for my community in donating items back. So using recycled things and finding these um, crazy knobs that I, I, I'm sure somebody gave them to me. I just don't even know where they came from. This is the inspo for the whole entire piece today. Isn't that cool? It's so cute. Let's see, you make your own sea spray. That texture additive is amazing. Being able to add it to any color really is fun, but I'm gonna paint right over top of it. Doesn't even matter what color it is. You can just, it's just gonna add beautiful texture. So these little antlers made me think about what I could paint on this piece to accentuate these ugly duckling knobs. And I decided that I'm going to paint a scene on the side. You know I love some hand painting. You know that I like to uh, paint barns and farms and cute things. I thought, why not paint a rustic forest scene to match these knobs? And guess what? We're gonna paint something that I've actually never painted today. So don't judge me if it needs some twerking at the end, a little tweak of, of the items that I'm painting because we're gonna paint some beautiful forest trees and I've never painted them before. I do know that these little fan brushes are essential for painting pine trees, but uh, we're gonna learn as we go. So let's do this, shall we? All right. 
All right, so on the top of this piece, I'm going to be staining it. I'm not doing that right now. I'm not doing that today because I tend to paint sides and put things on top while I'm working. I want to keep it nice and clean and work on that at the end. The top will be stained with Colonial No Paint Gel Stain, a uh, nice black gel stain. And we're going to work on here. So this is my dried sea spray. See my corner of repair? This whole corner was like ripped out. All the, the particle board was gone. It was, uh, it was pretty gross. I have. 11 billion colors on the floor of paint. So in order to know all the colors I'm gonna to use today, I'm just gonna tell you before I put them on. This way you can kind of grasp what I'm doing. But all of the painting that I'm gonna to do today with Dixieville Paint Products, um, this big mash of colors that we're gonna create, you can do with any Dixieville Paint colors you decide to do it with, okay? So let's start at the top. Let's start with the sky. I don't want this to be a pretty sun shining kind of a picture. You know my farm paintings. I like a little bit of dark. I like a little spooky. <laughs> I like the spooky, like foggy, dark look. So I'm gonna start at the top. Let's start with Savannah Mist. Savannah Mist is a grayish blue. Because I don't want like a perfect blue sky, we're gonna start with this. I'm gonna go right over top of my dried sea spray. This Savannah Mist is going to be my sky, right? I don't like how pretty it looks. Let's add a little bit of dark, shall we? Let's open some in the navy. In the navy is a deeper blue. I'm not even gonna change my brush. I'm gonna keep the same brush and I'm gonna come in here and add a little bit more dark, okay? I'm gonna add the dark into the corners because if this is a sky, a sky isn't perfect. It's not all sunshiny blue, right? It's got some darker value to it. Once I get the sky kind of where I want it, we're gonna come in and we're gonna make some clouds. So this is a lot of paint color mixing. So far Savannah Mist, so far some in the navy, definitely darker in the corners. And I also have my heat gun on the floor because we're going to heat it up and get it a little bit more dry before we work down further. So after my in the navy Savannah Mist, I think I wanna add a little bit of white in here, just in the middle, just as my just as my base. I mean, that's where the fog's gonna hang out, right? Because we're, we're painting a, look at that chunky mess. We're painting a night scene on this piece, right? Kind of like a forest theme, a forest sky. So let's add a little bit of white in the middle. I will keep a separate brush for my white because I will be making some clouds happen on here. So let's get this kind of base started. Have you painted a cloud sky before? It's actually quite easy and a lot of fun. I enjoy painting clouds a lot. So I'm gonna take my heat gun and dry this a little bit because I'm gonna get out my best dang brush and we're gonna to start to blend some colors around. We're gonna to start to make some blended sky. But that best dang brush, right? This best dang brush is a little bit pokey because of the synthetic and the natural fibers. It's not as soft as the synthetic brushes. So I find that having a nice dry base coat really helps me um, match those colors around on the second coat. So that's my kind of friendly advice of the day, is get that first coat fairly dry so that when you come in here and do your second coat, you're able to mash your color around quite well. So let's go back to the beginning and just do this again. Let's add a little bit of this blue up here. Oh, that's some dirt on there from the sides and then we're going to take our savannah mist i know this looks like a hot mess right now but bear with me bear with me there is a method behind this madness let's take a little white okay now when you use your best dang brush i find that my best dang brush works best when it's damp when it's wet right it holds a lot of paint in this brush this brush is a natural bristle uh, brush with also a uh, synthetic in there as well i believe it's 70% natural, 30% synthetic. So it, it holds a lot of paint. 
you're gonna see me dabbing it off on the on the ground and what that is is it's just me taking excess paint off of my brush all right so we're gonna to start to, to kind of blend this color together this brush is by far my fave for helping me create like a nice cloudy effect it's gonna pull these colors together so now see I feel like there's a lot of paint on there let's wipe it off a little bit on my napkin re-wet it's gonna pull these colors together to create this really pretty kind of cloudy sky you can add color you can take color away you're not locked in to like a perfect ombre blend you're able to really mash these colors around and get them looking natural so is it looking angry now it's looking kind of like an angry sky that's like my favorite way to paint making stuff look interesting nobody likes boring but how cute is this cloudy effect how easy is this to do so easy right with this brush this brush makes it simple now do i want darker in the corners do you think do you think it should be darker like more of an angry because these trees are going to come right down here in the middle right these trees are going to come right down kind of like a a v ish shape i feel like i might need to put a little bit more in the navy in the corner so I'm gonna open up, I've got a bunch of artist brushes down here in a cup. You're gonna to start to see me mix up my brushes a little bit because I'm gonna to start to do a little bit more detail work. And when you do a little bit more detail work, you tend to use smaller, smaller brushes. I have a cup on the floor with water and I'll just put them in there to hang out until I need them again because you're gonna to start to see me switch brushes around when I move some of this color. So this is in the navy savannah mist and a little bit of, of cotton can you see how that cloud is starting to happen see how natural it looks it doesn't look fake this brush helps you make really really authentic looking skies super fast how fast was that so fast right do you love it show me some hearts throw me some love i'd love to hear what you have to say about this look so far do you think it's something you can achieve imagine it with like black wax in the corners darkening it up a little bit and making it look really pretty. This is not hard. I feel like I've painted clouds live on the Dixie Bell paint page a lot. I know y'all can do this. This is not something that is a hard look to achieve. Okay, you can do it. So let's move down a little bit more. Let's change the color from white to let's smoke it up again. Let's use a little bit of, should I go Stormy Seas or should I go Hurricane Gray? I'm going to say Stormy Seas, okay? Stormy Seas is this kind of like in-between color. You like that? Thank you, Denise. So this is like a grayish color, okay? It's not hard. I see somebody saying it's the master of clouds. This, that brush, if you haven't got your best dang brush yet, please click that little link above my head and order yourself one because I swear you saw how fast that was. Super fast. I mean, we're not done. This is just my base, right? We're building a base on this piece to paint the trees, which I have never painted before, so it should be interesting. <laughs> should be interesting, we'll see. Let's see, you're still waiting. Use the brush, I'm giving you permission right now. You have my permission right now to use your best end brush. Get messy and play with your paint. Please, do it, do it now. All right, so let's take some of this Stormy Seas. Because I want the trees to come down, right? Let's start working on this base. What are we gonna do? Let's take the Stormy Seas and let's add like a little bit more of that white in the middle. It'll disappear, right? Because we're gonna be painting trees over top and, and mashing our paint around. We're just, we're building right now. We're building our layers. We're building our layers to get it where we want it to go. So here's my Stormy Seas and now we're gonna get dark. By the bottom of this piece, I want almost black I think on the floor I have black sands only because I couldn't find my caviar <laughs> and we're gonna mix it up let's see you can do it sure you can listen it's it this is a doable option these clouds are simple for everybody trust me so let's go from the bottom up before we're working from the top down let's go to the bottom up I'm gonna take my black sands and yes I know this is a silk paint and it's not made for blending it's made for you know a great one color coverage but I kind of want to put this darkness on the bottom. 
Number one, I couldn't find my caviar. It's somewhere, somewhere. But uh, it'll, it'll come up, it'll turn up. So for now, we're gonna use this black sands in the corner. We're gonna go black sands, which is like this really kind of pretty charcoal-y color. And we're gonna start to deepen and darken the bottom. Also on the floor, I have gravel road, which is I think what I'm gonna put here in the base. Gravel road is like an in-between brown and gray. I'm gonna use the same brush because it doesn't matter. Remember, I'm just creating this base. I'm just creating, all of this is gonna be covered in trees on the bottom. I'm just creating a darker color to be on my piece, okay? So sky, cloudy, angry, coming down, getting darker. And I'm, I'm not even being neat about applying my paint because I want to accentuate that stippled effect that we added with our Dixie Bells, let's see, <laughs> with our Dixie Bells uh, sea spray. I, see, I get distracted by comments. I just saw somebody saying they need to order. Order the brush, actually order two. Because when I'm painting a gorgeous ombre effect and I go from like a dark to a light, I keep two because these brushes hold the paint in their bristles. I like to start with the lighter on the top and then switch out my brush so that my brush is nice and white and light and clean. And then you're able to blend a little bit easier, but we're not even there yet, we're not there yet. We just, we're doing our base. We're getting, we're getting busy down here. So let me quick give you a recap of the colors. Cause somebody's gonna ask when I'm not looking and there's 11 billion colors on here. We started with In the Navy mixed into some Savannah Mist into some white cotton, okay? This is Stormy Seas. I've got some gravel road down here, and I've also added a little bit of black sands for, for deepness, for darkness. I wanna add some gray right here in the middle. So I'm gonna go into some hurricane gray, which is really not far off from Stormy Seas, um, but it's going to give me just a little bit of a different value in the middle, okay? Because when you're looking at kind of like a hand-painted scene, it doesn't matter if like all of the grays are different colors. So we're gonna start building trees up here. I just wanna kinda like lay some base down to start painting over top of, all right? And we're gonna use the same brush that I used up here. We're gonna use that best dang brush and we're going to put it on the piece and mash this color around, okay? I'm also going to then take my next brush out and use my next best dang brush for my clouds because we're gonna build up some clouds and fog, some fog on this piece. So I'm drying my, my work, my base, right? I'm drying this base because, remember I talked about the fact that this is like a, um, a pokey brush. That's all I can use to describe it. It's a pokey brush. <laughs> if you come in here with real wet paint, you're gonna move it around and it's gonna get mashed around and it's gonna pull your paint off. I and mean, you don't wanna do that. You want your base coat to be fairly dry before you jump in and do your second. I also use a lot of paint. I'm not a nice neat clean painter. I use a lot, I use too much paint. I'm an over painter, <laughs> but that's okay. That's how we roll over here. You could use cotton, you could use fluff. This is where we're gonna start to really dump a lot of paint onto this brush. When I do come back in and add in the clouds and the fog, we're gonna use a different best dang brush because this one's gonna be contaminated with a lot of colors. Just like all the brushes on my floor. I mean, do you wanna see what's on the floor? All these colors, all these brushes, always a mess, right? Always. But messy painting is fun painting, so I recommend it. Let's take this brush. You're gonna see me hold it close to the bristles, all right? If you hold it back here, you're too strong. It's gonna give you too, too much movement. You wanna be gentle, you want a light hand, you wanna kinda of dance it around the paint. And by holding it close to the bristles, at any point in blending with any brush, by holding it closer to the bristles, you, you gain more control over what you're trying to achieve. All right, any questions while you have me right here and I'm looking at the screen, drop them in, I can see. I'm gonna do a little bit of work and I'm gonna come back up here and look. So if you have questions about what I'm doing right now, please drop them in the comments and I will, uh, I will try and help them as I see them go along, all right? And if there's any smarty pants on here watching that knows the answer to the questions and I miss it, feel free to jump in and help me. I love my uh, knowledgeable watchers. There's always a couple on here that know all of the answers and they're super helpful to me um, in answering questions when I'm not able to look. All right, I don't see any popping up. So let's keep working. Is that caviar on the top of the cabinet? 
sitting up here is, yeah, is it my missing caviar? No, this is my Dixie Ball mug. My missing caviar is somewhere, somewhere. But this is what happens when I clean. What, and this is why you shouldn't clean. <laughs> Just leave your mess everywhere and you can find everything you're looking for. I mean, that's, that's the way I roll. All right, so dampen brush. Let's start to create a base where my trees are going to live. This is going to be a foggy treed effect, okay? We're gonna come in here and start to paint some pine trees, which I've never painted before. We're keeping it, keeping it real over here. I'm gonna learn as I go along with you all how to paint a tree. I'm not gonna lie, I looked it up. It doesn't seem that difficult. I think what's gonna be more difficult is creating my clouds and my fog. But my plan is to build these trees and build the fog in the trees, if that makes sense. This is going to be a cloudy, foggy piece. I don't know if you've watched my, my painting before where I, um, I paint a ombre night scene with trees and limeade. Have you seen that one before? If you missed it, you can always catch it on the Dixabelle paint page or um, I save all these videos to my own Facebook page for easier access. So if you missed it, you can go over there and check it out, or you can even check it out on my YouTube. It might be up on my YouTube, painting a cloudy kind of nighttime glowing scene. These brushes are like the fundamental piece to painting that. All right, this is where we're gonna stop, okay? So we have our, I'm trying to keep these brushes a little bit organized. We have our night sky, okay? The plan is to, paint trees that I've never painted before and then fog them up a little bit. Base, foggy trees, darker trees, darkest trees, okay? We're gonna work in, in levels, like in layers, from light to dark. I do know that a little tiny fan brush like this is essential, so let's start. I'm going to mix up some, let's see, Stormy Seas and a little bit of the Savannah Mist. Don't do as I do and mix it in your lid of your paint. You're not supposed to do that. But uh, yeah, that's what we're gonna do today, okay? We're gonna mix in the lids. I'll wipe them out before I put them back on. You know I like to make a mess. So, I'm gonna take some of my paint off my brush. Here goes nothing, folks. Here goes nothing. Remember I told you, these trees, I <laughs> I haven't painted them before. I'm kind of scared. Let me move the camera in a little bit closer so that we can see how close I can get you. I know that I know the fundamentals of painting a pine tree, but we just don't know how it's gonna look yet. So I'm gonna take my brush and we're gonna start. Yeah, we're gonna start right now. We're just gonna start. So I'm gonna take this brush and I'm gonna start to gently tap it and tap it out. I'm gonna fog these trees up because these are gonna be the, the trees in the background, right? gonna be the lightest layer of trees. So this little brush is called a fan brush. It's just a, a, an artist brush from probably Hobby Lobby since I have a Hobby Lobby problem. And uh, we're gonna start to fade them in. So this is gonna be the background. I'm gonna do lightest trees at the back. Got too much paint on here. I don't hate it, I'm not gonna lie. So far, so good. We're gonna paint these little pine trees in the back in a light color and then add fog and then add darker trees. So they're gonna kind of disappear. They're not gonna come all the way to the bottom, right? We're just kind of, we're just starting. Can you see? Can you see? See those trees? Can you imagine what I'm doing now? Can you, can you read my mind a little bit? We're gonna do that. I feel like I need to bring one up here. So let's take one at the top. Sorry, when I do detail painting, I don't talk. Surprise, I always talk. So this fan brush is really good at kind of like making like an authentic looking evergreen, right? Because that's what this is. It's just an evergreen. So this light color one is gonna come out first, building these, building these trees into darkness. 
So the color I'm using here is just a mix of these two, which is Stormy Seas and some Savannah Mist. I'm not putting like tree trunks or anything on them. I'm just, I'm just getting in here. I'm actually gonna add a little bit more dark. Let's add a little more dark to this one. Let's make this one a tiny bit darker. There's nothing wrong with adding dimension to your trees, right? A little dark, a little light. Can you see it? <laughs> I feel like it's very quiet. I should be talking. I should be talking. I'm not used to not, not talking. And you know this. I'm just going to kind of start to add a little bit of depth into these trees. Let's add a little darkness. So here I'm dipping into my different darker colors. I think if you wanted to try this painting, this style of painting in any form of, of blues or any forms of grays, but can you see now how this ugly duckling knob, the ugly antlers, how the antlers, because this is gonna be on the side, I'm gonna do it on the other side, and I'm probably gonna drag it around the front a little bit, how that's gonna look good with the dark top so much fun, right? So this will wrap around the front, yep. And the other side, I'm actually thinking on the other side, I'm gonna do a black asphalt road coming, kind of peeking in out of the fog. So this black asphalt road will come down here and I'll do yellow, kernel yellow, kernel mustard, yellow road lines. Is that too much? Is there ever too much? No, no, there's never too much. Paint all the things. Paint how you like. Paint whatever makes your little heart happy because you are the boss of you. I'm being Bob Ross today. Be the trees. I have two of these brushes. So I wonder if one would work better than the other. Let's check it out. I might have a favorite. We'll see what happens. So after I get this kind of base tree in, I'm gonna dump some fog in. We're gonna dump some more fog in. And after the fog comes in over top of these trees, we're going to add um, darker trees, because why not? I'm not hating the trees for the first time ever painting pine trees. They're looking really good. Are you still, can you still see? Should you bring them even closer? Even closer? How's that? Do you want me to like drop the camera right in here? <laughs> I can try, I can try. I always feel like anxious when I have to move the camera when I'm actually painting that the camera stand might like fall down. So I'm not gonna add shading or anything to these trees, okay? I'm really not. I just wanna get them on because I'm gonna fog them up. Let's get them on, hurry up. Less talking, more painting, hurry up. So here's my cute little foggy trees. Now let's, do I have enough? Do I need more? Should I have like a taller one? Up here, up here? I need to look in front. Let's just, let's just make this one a little bit taller. He's cute, I like that. All right, so now here we're gonna, we're gonna do, we're gonna dry my work, okay? Because we're gonna come in here with the best thing brush and add some smoke. We're gonna add some clouds and some fog. How are we doing? You hanging in? Are you liking this? Odd numbers of trees. One, two, three. Oh, you're right. I only have six, but this is just the first layer. Let's keep going. Maybe the next layer will have more or less, or maybe a bigger value coming up in the front to kind of bring it together. I totally agree. Nothing should have even numbers left here. Odd numbers are way better. Okay, so now it's dry a little bit. So do you remember I talked about the Bestang brush being, um, uh oh, this is my wax one. I put a hairband, there's a hairband I need, but if I take this off my wax brush, then I won't remember this is my wax brush. <laughs> and I'll use it where I shouldn't. That hairband is telling me that this is the wax brush. So let's get the other one. Here we are, okay. We're gonna now take some fog, okay? So in order to make fog, I need to go back to lights. If I use the best dang brush that I had before, 
it has all my dark value on it. I don't want dark value. I want light value, okay? So that means I'm going to deposit some white. Don't panic. This is where it gets ugly, all right? I'm gonna add some fog. Right now, everybody's screaming, going, oh my gosh, she painted over her work. No, she didn't. We're gonna, we're gonna make some magic. Here's my damp brush, nothing on it. I want even more wet. These brushes like suck up moisture. They suck all my moisture up. I want even more, I want even more. Put more, put more. Start fogging this up. Let's start making some fog happen where there wasn't any before. Let's fog up these trees and make them disappear just a little bit, just a little bit. I'm totally making this up as I go along. I hope it doesn't suck <laughs> because I have an idea, but sometimes my ideas don't come to fruition that easily. You never know. So we're fading out the work that we just did, right? Because this is the back layer. Okay, what are we thinking? Hearts, do I hear hearts? Do I see hearts? Do I see love? Does it look foggy? <laughs> I didn't ruin it. See, I have a plan. There is a master plan. I actually feel like I should even put more fog up here. Like the fog should be like, kind of like spilling down from the sky. Delicious. I actually really like it. Are we good with this? Are we liking this? Am I, am I Bob Rossing it up enough for you today? So let's just continue on. So this was Stormy Seas Savannah Mist. Let's, let's add some, some green value, okay? Because I feel like by the time I get to the, the very bottom, which will be the very front, it will be almost black, right? Let's start. Oh, I wonder if I can use coffee bean instead of black on the bottom. It could happen. We could. Let's open all the colors on the floor. So I'm going to show you what's open on the floor um, because it's a lot. It's all of the paint, all on the floor. All right, so now we're going to go all of these blues and grays and browns. See them all on the floor? If you want, I can alter my post at the end to show you all of the colors used. But to be honest with you, if you're painting this at home, it, it doesn't matter as long as you keep it kind of like in the same color value. Do you know what I mean? You're going to still have blues, whites, grays. I want to come up, up into black, okay? So I'm going to wash my brush. I'm actually going to put both of them in the water. And I'm going to dry it off. Let's go a little bit darker. In order to make a darker color, I'm going to start to use my Hurricane Gray mixed in with my Stormy Seas, right? Because the last one I had, Stormy Seas mixed in with the Savannah Mist which made it lighter. So let's start to go a little darker. We're good, we're still hanging in. Thank you, Christine, thank you. Okay, so we had six trees. Somebody mentioned the odd number, I agree. I hate matching numbers. Let's do darker. I feel like the darker the trees get, the more anxious I'm gonna get about making them look good. Because light color, like faded out like that, hiding, will be easy. It's going to be the darker ones that get a little bit harder. Let's add these darker trees in. Also, what the heck time is it? I don't want to keep you guys on here for like five hours. We've been doing this for 40 minutes so far, painting trees. Should I put a tree trunk in? Do I need to put a brown tree trunk in now? Let's, let's, that brush is broken. Let's, let's do uh, some crazy stuff in here. Let's add like a dark tree branch. Do we have dark tree branches? And then when I mix the paint in, you might see a tiny peak of it, but not a lot. So now I'm mixing gravel road and some of that stormy seas. Is it translating across on the screen? I like, I feel like maybe it's not, but it is, it's there. It's definitely darker. 
and we're gonna do the same fog, right? After I get this layer down, we're gonna do the same fog. I have to look at what's starting from my back of my head. I need to look from here. Too much paint on my brush, too much paint. Here's the thing also, who cares if your tree's not perfect? It's um, nature. Nothing in nature is perfect. It's not, right? I mean, we can try, but there's no perfect. There's just paint. Ooh, that's a good one. I like it. Now you can see how this darker value is playing into the darker value in the bottom, which obviously is not done. I still need to build and build and build. But we're going to bring this fog in. Every layer of trees is going to have more fog. Right? And they're, I feel like they're also might get bigger, right? Because if the ones in the back are further away, they would be smaller, right? Wrong, maybe. I'm not, a, I'm not an art teacher, but I'm trying. I don't like this brush anymore. I'm going back to the other brush. You've lost me. I don't like you anymore. Does anybody else do that? They like change their mind. I'm a little fickle when it comes to like products and brushes. I love it one day and then I, I hate it the next one. Ooh, I like this brush better. He's feeling better. That's a better tree. Ooh, I like it. He's looking moody. He's looking, looking a little angry. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Okay. Keep going. I got like 10 more minutes and then I'll let y'all go. So if you wanted to follow up on the rest of this painted tree project, because I can't, I can't do the whole thing. Um, you're going to want to come over to my own Facebook page, the top drawer RVA. I did link it in the blurb above my head so that you can come follow along on my own painting journey. I tend to not have as much of a schedule over there. I like to kind of go with the flow and hop in, hop in whenever I feel like it which isn't as good as a 3 p.m. Dixie Bell paint page live, but you will see it because I always save them all to my page, right? They're all saved over there. You can always come over and hang out with me. We'll finish it up together. So this is the continuing pattern. I think on the other side, I will add that black gravel road and the white lines with the yellow middle kind of, you know, do not cross line. I think that's going to happen. So what do we have? We have four six i need to put one up here right because this is a little bit naked up here let's do a little one over here oh, i'm scared now mm -mm. i kind of don't want to put one there i'll just do a tiny one over here radio silence <laughs> okay okay so now I'm gonna stop again let's put these brushes in water let's hit this with the dryer so that I can do one more little thing of fog and then I'm gonna let y'all go so how's this vision coming together it looks nice it's Smoky Mountains very cool I've never been to the Smoky Mountains I've been to the Blue Ridge Mountains um, I'm in the state of Virginia so we have beautiful mountains around us the Shenandoah Valley and the gorgeous Blue Ridge Parkway. Okay, so I'm gonna bring the camera in a little bit. Remember we talked about the texture. Remember we added that sea spray at the beginning of the video, okay? Let's see if I can do this without losing y'all. I'm gonna, first of all, it's gonna get a little shaky. I'm gonna bring you down a little lower. So do you remember we talked about the texture? So this added texture to cover up my damages it's just gonna become part of the trees. Can you see how these trees come down here into this, right? So you've got this added bumpy, lumpy texture. I did it up here as well for the sky. I might even come in and add more clouds. Like I don't, I don't know if I wanna add more clouds to this or if I just wanna keep it looking foggy. But we did that base trees, then we fogged it up. Let's do a little bit more fog before we go. For that, I need the white brush, remember? We have two brushes, different values. This had all my darks on it. This is gonna keep my whites white. All right, so I'm gonna take that white brush. Let's fog it up some. 
This is where everybody freaks out. Don't worry. There's a method behind this madness of white fog. Okay, so I'm going to wet my brush. And we're going to take it and we're going to swirl it around. We're going to start to swirl it around. You might, I need a new paper towel. Do, do, do. Paper towels, paper towels. And wipe it off and we need to start to make some of this fog happen. Gentle holding of the brush. Remember, gentle, gentle. What's that allowing us to do? That's allowing us to build this fog up in layers, blotting it off. Here I am painting all this foggy, foggy fall winter scene in the middle of summer. What the heck? <laughs> I like to think of like a season ahead. I get, uh, I get a little bit over summer at some point. Okay, so here's the fog coming in again. So we added the second level of fog. See that fog? So now we're going to do more trees, right? Darker trees. Every level of trees is going darker from the lightest to the darkest. Let's keep going. Couple more trees, what time are we at? Let me see, 347, a few more minutes. All right, so I'm gonna go back to my fan brush, if I can find it. I think what I'm gonna do first is paint some, some brown um, tree, what do you call those things? <laughs> tree limbs? Oh my gosh, I've lost the ability to talk. Because I kinda of want them to get dry a little bit. Like I feel like I wanna be able to see them a tiny bit. Okay, so there's my tree limbs and my coffee bean. So if this was Hurricane Gray mixed with Gravel Road, I wanna go darker. Let's, let's choose coffee bean and Gravel Road because now the grays have kind of weaned themselves out. We're gonna go a little bit more brown this time, all right? And then I might even start to mix some green in. I have on the floor some, where? I have colored greens, okay? Let's start making a little bit of a darker mash of like a green-ish, brown-ish um, tone, okay? And then move up. So I'm gonna start up here with this tree. We're just gonna keep getting darker and darker. I mean, these trees, by the time I'm done at the bottom, will be the darkest, which is where I wanted my caviar that I couldn't find today. It's somewhere. It's somewhere in the house. It's funny, I went so dark you're not even gonna see the stem anyways. That's okay. I mean, if you were a smart painter, you would have a reference on the floor of what actual trees look like. But um, I did not. I looked at them before I started, but I'm just going with the flow. a lot of trees. <laughs> so, actually, you know what these trees are looking a little bit like? They're looking a little too, too perfect. Let's, let's, um, let's de-perfect some of these trees. They kind of look a little bit too much the same. I want them to like not be as much the same. Does that make sense? I don't want them to be so perfect, but I don't know how to make them any other way than the way that I've been making them. Hmm. Again with the silence. Sorry, I can't talk and do these details at the same time. <laughs> How we do? We hanging in? A few more minutes. I'm gonna let you go. All right, y'all. I think that's it for me. Can't uh, I can't really do anything other than just keep like doing this right? Keep making these trees happen. And I'm just going to keep building. A lot of this is just going to be about these layers and layers and layers. It's kind of fun, right? I think I'll smoke the fog out and come all the way down the front of this piece to here 
and then I'm gonna bring black up the edges. I can use that coffee bean. The coffee bean would work good um, in those corners to add a little bit more darkness, I think. The coffee bean can come in there. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop now and regroup, wash all my brushes. Did you know there's a new, um, new brush cleaner out? Dixie Belle has a new brush cleaner. It's amazing for when you get these old chunky brushes and they have old set in paint, which you know majority of my brushes are just junky old brushes. So take a minute, go over to the Dixie Bell paint page, check out their new brush cleaner. It's really great. It's got a, like a really great conditioner in it. Keeps your brushes really smooth and very conditioned. I think you'll like it. I really have been liking it. My daughter actually used it last week. She's an artist and she likes to paint as well. And she came downstairs and told me that her brushes were feeling quite chunky. Um, so I used that soak for almost a day and they came out looking really, really, really good. So don't forget to add some lighter tones over the dark. I won't, but I need to fog it up still. So I kind of have to build these layers and then come back in with the fog, right? Because we're still gonna fog over top of that dark and then that'll change it a little bit too. But so far so good. It doesn't suck. <laughs> it's kind of cute, right? It's kind of a fun little boy thing. So now you can see how these little acorn, these little uh, antlers, these are my inspiration for the piece. We're going rustic. This is a boy dresser. I will definitely be staining the top, whether it be black or espresso, and it's gonna be a lot of fun. So Christy's asking if the new brush cleaner replaces scrubby soap. I personally love some scrubby soap and find that I use a lot of the scrubby soap even after I use the new brush cleaner. The new brush cleaner really takes the old paint out of um, the brushes. Like I'm talking like the stuff that like has been in there for days, rock solid. I had a brush that I forgot about and it was completely dried solid with Moonshine Metallics. So I came in with that new brush cleaner and I, um, I was able to let it soak and it pulled out the entire old paint. I then used my scrubby soap to come in and add kind of that extra texture and pull the, pull the old paint off. But yeah, it was definitely, it was definitely useful. I, I think that we were in, in long overdue need of a really great brush cleaner. So go check it out. It is located on the Dixie Bell paint page. I did link that above my head and you can uh, see all the new products. They also have the new thingamajig on there, which is a lot of fun for stencils. I really like that one for stenciling. And uh, yeah, stay tuned. This is a work in progress. I will come back and show you as it goes along what happens with my pine trees for never painting them before. I'm, I'm a happy, I'm, I'm a happy mama. They actually turned out quite well. I like them, I like the look, but it's time to regroup and let my brushes get clean, come back in and decide what is the next step. So once this layer dries, again with the fog, bring the fog down to the front and then dirt up the sides. I think it's cool. I hope you had fun today hanging out with me learning how to paint a forest scene. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. And I think the ability to like smoke it up, right? And add those, that lighter value over top and making that fog come in, it's kind of what makes it look like even better. <laughs> it might not be perfect, but when you add that fog in, it starts to make it look really neato. It starts to make it look different, right? It changes it a little bit. Instead of being so, you know, monotoned or one color, you're able to kind of see texture and fog and like, it's like fake artistry. It's not real. <laughs> it's not like, I've never done these trees before. So I needed to like find a way to make them look super good. And I think the fog is what does it. The fog pulls it together. So thank you guys for joining me today. If you're joining me late, I am Melissa from the Top Drawer RVA. I am a Dixie Bell brand ambassador. And, uh, I am live here every Wednesday at 3 p.m. to sit on the floor and play with paint. I'm gonna go wash all my brushes with my brand new brush cleaner. If you haven't seen it yet, go check it out. It is attached to the link above my head. You can find that brush cleaner there. But I think a necessity for this look is fogging in that white, fogging in, those for this look is fogging in that white, fogging in those colors with your best dang brush. This brush is essential for a fun look like this. I hope you had a great time. I'll see you again next week. Stay tuned. Bye everybody.